Hey guys, how are you doing? Hope everyone's doing well during this crazy times of uh, COVID. Hopefully I could provide a little entertainment here. I am working on Delta, the German Shepherd. This is um, a commission. And um, she is a really gorgeous dog. I am really enjoying working on her a lot. So I did a charcoal transfer to get the outline um, here. And I really enjoy the charcoal transfer because I feel like I can set up my um, composition however I want it to be. And you can't see it. Well, you can kind of see it. There's um, two other dog spaces on here. So it is actually um, a portrait of three dogs in total. So this is the first one. And so it's a super large piece. It's actually one of my biggest commissions so far yet. I'm really excited to work on this, but yeah. Like I said, it's my largest commission, so, you know, no pressure. Right now I'm using Ivory from Polychromos. Kind of a little bit of an undertone, base, base tone here. And just going really lightly, getting this general area. I really want to go with the direction of the fur, even if you're doing a base, uh, base color, base tone here, you still want to go with the length of the fur. You can do like little circles like this. That's fine, but you definitely want to make sure I, I always tend to go light for the base coat and, um, excuse me, base color and then go like, go layer by layer, just run like generally a lot of layers. I have the brown ochre from Luminance. Again, super light pressure. So she kind of has this golden orange coat around her neck. And I'm going in with ivories, brown ochre, burnt sienna, walnut brown, and just gently layering them. And I think those gentle layers really like start to add up to just this soft, gentle fur that kind of glows. And this has a lot of, a lot of dimension. Draw the fur as you start to add in darks, more more dark tones. Um, I'll tend to kind of see, look at the fur in sort of clusters, 
rather than all these like random wisps of hair going in all different directions. It may not be very apparent right now, but as like, again, adding more layers in, you'll just start to see how clusters of hair get sectioned off and it kind of creates like an organization for the eye when looking at the portrait. It doesn't look messy or random when you do that. So um, hopefully that will make a little bit more sense as, uh, as I go along. I feel like this quarantine is like, hasn't affected me much as far as going out. I guess I naturally quarantine myself anyway, doing art all day. Um, oh, but it certainly is like, it's certainly mentally exhausting because it's just like, oh, I want to go out and see live music or go out dancing or meet people. And so that was kind of, it's mentally exhausting that I can't just go and do that. But, uh, certainly hope this thing passes, passes soon, although it certainly doesn't seem like it will. I'm looking for Art Sienna, or maybe Mars Orange, where is that? Where did you go, Mars Orange? So put in a little bit of orange here. This is Mars Orange from Luminance. And if you're going to use, I think like, um, I want to call them unusual colors, like orange or blue, like there's some blue right here. Um, I even add some purple and some maroon up in the forehead. Um, sometimes I usually apply those kind of in the beginning. So it's not like so obviously orange or blue or purple. Um, although sometimes it might be depending on how the, you know, the light shines on the fur. Here I am applying the Mars orange, um, to one of the base layers. So it won't be so like obviously orange, but it's going to give it that pop and, um, I don't know, it feels like a nice glow to, to the fur. Still applying very light pressure. You'll definitely see color pencils are a slow medium. They're a very relaxing medium. I really enjoy them. I get a little bit into painting, but um, not that much. I always kind of get pulled back into colored pencils. This feels like painting, like a different type of painting. And actually I could see a little bit of violet around this section. It's like a violet brown. I'm gonna add a little bit of that. I think like the more I draw, the more I see like these unusual colors that you would not think to use, like purples. Um, 
but I think the more colors you can use and apply them in nice layers without getting them muddy, it just makes your animal pop so much. that violet I was talking about and this is um this is Mars violet I really love this color um, this is from the luminant series kind of feeling a little messy over here. I think I just like let things get away. This Mars Violet is a really muted violet which I really like as well as light, but then it kind of creates, um, it's kind of, I don't know, it feels like light and dark at the same time. It's, that's a really weird thing to say, but um, yeah, it has this really muted earthy uh, tone to it that just really is nice for fur. So even if you don't buy the whole luminance set, which is quite pricey, um, you can go on like Blick uh, website and order the individual pencils. And this is like one of my favorite colors to use, as well as the Mars Orange. So Mars Violet and um, Mars Orange are some of my favorite colors from, from that series. Hmm. some darker, um, uh, I don't know, I'll use, all right, burnt umber. I think like the majority of the colors that I use are probably from the polychromos. They're just, um, they're just so good. They're really good. They blend well. The color palette is just phenomenal. They're really a great pencil set. Certainly, I think, like, the workhorse of, of most of my commissions. Mm. 
Here I'm adding some granite rose pink uh, from Pablo's to the fur. And I'm just going with a light pressure. not doing it to make it look pink um, obviously but um, kind of adds that as a little more dimension burnt umber and I just been kind of going back and forth with burnt umber, um, dark sepia, black and just keeping with a light pressure as well. It's a beautiful sunny day outside. I think I'm gonna finish up this section and probably go for a little jog before it gets cold and snowy again. Hopefully you guys are getting out wherever you're at. I'm here in Denver and um, I think we're gonna get snow later on this week. So gotta enjoy the weather while you can. I mean, Colorado has pretty pretty decent weather compared to so many places wherever you you are I hope you're getting out when you can So I like to kind of like change my pencil angle around so like I'm getting new angles and it's kind of staying, keeping the, the point that's touching the paper that's drawing um, a little bit more on the sharp side. Kind of helps me get all the, the fur texture in there without having to like um, sharpen the pencil constantly. Cause that can, uh, you can go through your pencil if you're constantly needing it to be sharp. So if you just like kind of turn, do a little quarter turn and get that like new edge, you can kind of get a bit of a sharp point. Um, given, you know, you may have, um, you may be working on like some detail work where you need to obviously need like get that super sharp point. So you need to sharpen. Um, for sure, when I'm like working around the eyes, I want like some crisp lines. Um, but like fur, you're gonna have that soft, softer look. So it's okay. Make sure your fur is not going like just straight lines. Otherwise it's just kind of starts to look fake. Um, even in one area, you want 
things to kind of go in sl ever so slightly different directions or maybe you know it may vary quite uh, quite a bit but um, if it's just going in these like straight lines next to each other it's gonna just look fake um, and that's you know that's hard to kind of get away from it's like we're pushing ourselves to do something a little bit different a little bit outside of our comfort zone starting to really come together. <clears throat> Going back to black, um, I kind of have like two blacks and I'll, I'll keep like one point sharp, uh, just cause I like the little bit more of a crisp, uh, sharp, sharp line, sharp edge from the black. Um, it just really depends. One thing I've kind of noticed um, is with yellow and black, if you blend those two together, they almost take on a greenish hue. Um, you probably don't want that in your fur. So this is where layering comes in and you don't want to go back and forth over, over the same spot. Um, like you want to kind of do it a couple of times and then leave it. Uh, otherwise the colors go from a layering to like a more blended and then we'll kind of get that greenish greenish hue that you want to avoid unless the dog is green for some reason <laughs> so. brown, walnut brown for um, polychromos. good about this area. Oh, I see that and then I'm like, nope. Gonna um, use a little bit of the slice tool. Uh, so this is hot press watercolor paper um, arches. Uh, I haven't used Fabriano, but I hear great things about it. Um, so when I use it, I really use it um, on the side you know, I'm not really pointing down, so I'm just kind of using the side of the blade. And you can just use very light pressure here. Um, so what I guess I was trying to say with the hot press uh, watercolor paper is 
um, using the slice on this a lot starts to um, break the surface of the paper. And I'll notice like if I overwork an area with the slice tool, it, uh, it will start to look um, kind of shredded and messy and kind of a little bit muddy in the colors because they're not coming off as clean. Um, so with the slice tool on the hot press paper, I do go a little bit more conservatively than say like um, a Bristol vellum or a mixed media or something else. So pretty light, pretty uh, gentle, pretty subtle. I don't know what the camera is picking up on, but um, it's pretty subtle and I think it kind of makes all the difference. You just are going for these like little details that, uh, you know, collectively make the, make the picture just so much more complete. Um, and I also find the slice tool works best when you have several layers on. If you put a few layers and it's not very thick, then you're really not going to see any like benefit from the slice tool. The, the layers do have to be on there so you're actually um, able to pick up some pigment off the, off the paper. All right, that's good. Um, and then I'm probably going to go in with some darks. Um, that got there like that um, so it's like you take off the pigment and then you reapply pigment Okay, I think um, I'm gonna leave it here. All right, guys. Thank you for joining me today. Um, stay safe, pick up a hobby. Hopefully it's art since you've been uh, watching me this whole time so far. Um, and watch out for some future real-time videos and also some time-lapse on my channel. Thanks, bye.